Hello everyone, welcome to Accounting 210. Uh, in this video, I want to review and talk about chapter two, um, including all the main important part in the handout and then some practice. Okay, so let's get started. Um, chapter two, actually there are two important things, uh, two important things when you review it for the exam. I personally think the first part is all the concepts. And then the second part is the uh, calculation, you know. So um, I'm not going to read the PowerPoint. Instead, I just point out something. Uh, we talk about three different companies. Um, and then the main important thing is um, about their inventory. So after learning all other chapters, I think you may feel better uh, for the inventory. Why we think inventory is important because <laughs> It's part of your balance sheet and then also will be part of your cost goes sold in the income statement. Uh, so make sure you know um, those things. You know, we talk about working process and then raw material finish goes through different type of inventory for the manufacturing company. Uh, second part, we talk about value chain. I'm not going to read, but make sure you know there are six parts of a value chain. And then if I give you any example, I say, hey, uh, when you distribute your products, so that will be the distribution function or distribution part. Another thing is we said uh, production or purchase, this is for the inventory. Uh, so all the others, they will be period cost. Only this is a product cost. Uh, so we link that to the later um, concepts there. Um, so from there, we talk about direct and indirect. Uh, it's important for our manufacturing overhead because we said direct labor, direct material, that those we can trace. Um, but for the indirect, all other indirect costs in manufacturing department, indirect labor, indirect material, and then other manufacturing overhead that we cannot trace, so we have to allocate. We have to allocate. I talk about allocation in chapter three, chapter four, uh, chapter three and chapter five, chapter three and chapter four, yes. And so, so if it's direct, it will be direct labor, direct material. If it's not direct, it will become manufacturing overhead for the manufacturing department. Um, we also talk about product cost and the period cost. Uh, we said it's important because Product cost will be your inventory, but when you sell it, it's cost of goods sold. So inventory is in the balance sheet. Cost of goods sold is in the income statement. Um, so we talk about that. We said uh, you have a product cost. All the others will be period cost. For service companies, since they don't have production, all of their value chain will be the period cost. Okay. A period expense, period cost, operating expense, you know. Um, so your product cost, if it's not sold, then it will be inventory. If it's sold, it became cost of goods sold. Okay, um, so we talk about the Apple here, service, no inventory, no cost of goods sold, right? Um, we said product cost, you have um, cost of merchandising and then free in and then all the tax. For merchandising company. Um, main focus is on the manufacturing company because they have this direct material, direct labor, and then manufacturing overhead. Those three parts will be your product cost. Uh, I have nothing really much, you know, we have been talking about manufacturing overhead a lot. I even we watch the video in class. I can share the video if you need me to share the video, I can share the video with you. Um, so it's very important to find out the manufacturing overhead. Uh, it's just the, all the costs in the manufacturing department in the um, plan, planet that is not direct labor or direct material. Okay, then the next thing, I think last thing is just the prime cost is direct material and direct labor because they are the main parts. But conversion is how do we convert the direct material to product. We need to use labor and then we need to use manufacturing overhead. So until now, I think we kind of reviewed all the important uh, concepts. When we talk about concepts, I want you to read textbook, you know, get some ideas so you will get 
the right answer in the multiple choice. I will not let you write down definition or something, but I will definitely test you some concepts in the multiple choice. Um, so next part is the thing uh, calculation. You know, you may well be tested in a multiple choice or maybe even in a problem. We want to look at some together. General idea, right? Service company is easy because you just have revenue. You have all the operating expense. You don't have a cost of sold because no inventory. Uh, merchandising is not hard either. Uh, the only thing we said is that you have to know how do we get a cost of goods sold? How do we get a cost of goods sold? Basically, is you have your beginning inventory plus your purchase plus your tax plus your shipping gives you available for sale minus your ending gives you cost of goods sold. So you got this cost of goods sold, the 106,500, then you put it under cost of goods sold. So you have your revenue minus cost of goods sold gives you gross profit minus all the operating including salary, rent, marketing, so you get your operating income. I don't worry too much about that. Uh, the only main thing I worry <coughs> for my students is the manufacturing company. How do you get their income statement? So that takes a little bit longer time to go through. General idea is, right? You cannot say, the, sorry, you can go back to your textbook. General idea is, you have to use your raw material and then you plus direct labor plus your working process. You got cost of goods manufactured. So you have to manufacture first and then they became finished goods and then when they are sold, they became cost of goods sold. So you have to first get the raw material used. You have to get cost of goods manufactured. Then you get cost of goods sold. So there are three steps. There are three steps. The first step is how do we get uh, direct material used? So it's a similar idea. We focus on direct material. So you have a beginning, you have a purchase, you minus the ending, you got a direct material used. You got direct material used. And then how do we get cost of goods manufactured, right? How to goods manufacture? Now we use a work in process. You, so you have a beginning working process. You add your material used. Remember, we calculated our direct material used is 14,000. So we add our 14,000, and we use our direct labor, we use our manufacturing overhead, you get manufacturing cost to account for, then you minus your ending inventory, you minus your ending inventory, uh, sorry, you minus your ending working process inventory to get a cost of goods manufacturing. Once you get that, then you can calculate cost of goods sold. It's the beginning finished goods plus your manufactured minus your ending finished goods inventory. Uh, so that is how to calculate cost of goods sold. That's how do we calculate cost of goods sold. Okay, we practice some later. Um, and then we said also for the balance sheet. Service company, no inventory merchandise, you just uh, have the merchandise inventory manufacturer, you have a raw material, you have working process, you have finished goods. Okay. And then we talk about fixed cost, we said for the total is the same, uh, but for each individual one, it will decrease. Um, for variable cost, each one is constant, but total will increase when you have more activity. Um, so we talk about something I think you did your uh, my accounting lab one concern is you cannot use the average cost of prediction, especially you cannot use the uh, per unit cost for the fixed cost to do any decision making because <laughs> when you allocate fixed cost based on your active level that per unit amount will be different in the other active level, activity level, I would say. Um, so you cannot, so conclusion is you cannot use per unit fixed cost to make any decision. Otherwise you will have a trouble. I think once you uh, practice the my accounting lab, you kind of get some idea there. Okay, so, um, Finish the reviewing this um, handout. I want to do this um, multiple choice briefly with you, and then next video I'll talk about your 
take home your mind on counting lab those questions. So I'm not going to say too much, you know, um, has inventory, but no working process, you know, so you have an inventory, so that can either be manufacturing or merchandising, but no working process, so you just have a merchandising. I put my page number, I put where you can find it. So go back to your textbook, look for those concepts. It's not a value chain, you should know this one, you know. I'm not going to just read. Uh, trees that will be direct cost, right? We say if you can trace it's direct cost. Working process, you have that. Uh, it's still ring working, right? You are still process, you are not finished. Because if you are finished, that will be your finished goods. Period cost, you know, it's also referred to as operating expense. And then direct cost, when you make the one, direct cost, you can trace it. We say utility taxes, insurance, those are very common manufacturing overhead. So you do, those are all indirect costs. The grip, you know how many grips you use to make the one, you can trace it. Um, it's not a part of a manufacturing overhead, not part of a manufacturing overhead. We said crushing labor, this is direct labor. It's not manufacturing overhead because you can trace it. Uh, we said all value chain will be period cost that is of a service because no inventory, no production, so everything will be period cost. You don't have a cost of goods sold for service, you only have a period of cost. Um, it's a period cost with advertising, right? So direct material, direct labor, manufacturing, they are always a product of cost. Uh, question 10 talks about inventory, cost of goods sold, so it's a merchandising and then manufacturing. Okay, I put more time on some calculation from 11 to 15, I think. Our question 11 said, how about cost of goods sold? So cost of goods sold basically is beginning plus your manufactured minus your ending, right? We said the general administrative selling, they are all with period cost. So beginning is 4,000, your manufacturer 25,000, your ending is 6,000, so, um, Cost of goods sold is 23,000. You can see I, did, I, didn't, uh, I didn't get the question at the very beginning. I thought it's this, but you use this beginning plus your manufacturer the minus your ending. This is how you get question 11. And the next one I'm talking about uh, question 12 is not a variable uh, for a plant manufacturer iPad with a three line depreciation. Depreciation is fixed cost. The depreciation is especially straight line. I would choose this straight line. At least in our class, you just need to know. Straight line depreciation is always fixed cost. Okay. And next one talking about what? Talking about um, cost per unit. The cost per unit. So we have to get all the cost that divided by the unit, right? So our product cost is direct material, direct labor, and the manufacturing overhead is divided by 50,000, and you get 82 cents. Next one, question 14, is it true, is it true? Um, the average cost we said that you cannot be used, you cannot be used, right? So it is wrong, you cannot use the average cost because it contains the average fixed cost, which is the troublemaker. Uh, manufacturing overhead, no, we say it's variable and then also plus your fixed cost, like your depreciation, right, for the um, manufacturing machine. Fixed cost stay the same in total, yeah, that's correct. And then direct material, uh, they are variable cost, direct material, they are variable cost. Okay, I think I put the star in question 15, I want you to pay attention. Uh, we said you work the, this hour and then you use the, this direct material incurred rent for factory. So keyword is a factory. Sorry, I already put my note today. Uh, keyword is a factory. So if it's a factory, then it's our manufacturing overhead. In the store, if they store and they sell, that will be our period. That's our selling cost. That's our selling cost. And you produce this much, you only sold this much. So our cost of goods sold is only the part you sold, but we want to get the total production cost, right? Total production cost, direct labor, direct material, manufacturing overhead. Direct labor is, you worked a thousand hours, each hour is 15, so that's direct labor. And then direct material is 12,000 there directly. 
manufacturing overhead is only this 8,000 rent. You say, hey, how about that 10,000 rent? That's the period cost. That's the period cost. You have to know what is uh, manufacturing overhead, what is period cost. So you totally got 35,000 for 2,000 units. But you didn't sell all of the units, right? You just uh, sold 1,800 units. Uh, so you can use the 35,000 divided by 2,000, you get each one, and then you time the units you sold. Or you can just say, hey, this is for total 2,000, but I only sold 1,800 out of 2,000. And then the cost, if you do that, it's the same, it's still 31,500. So this is kind of give you idea of 31,500, 31,500. Okay, I think this is a good practice, multiple choice 15, you know, I may change some words for in the exam. I think it's, it's kind of hard, but it's a good practice. Okay, I'll stop here. I don't want to make a too long video. Uh, just let me know if you have any, 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 any question. I'm always there. Uh, see you next time.